It was good because today is going to be a good one, guys. Today is going to be a very good one. Making sure everybody's here first and I'll start. Let's see which direction I'm walking. All right, guys, so we're going to start today. What a crazy day, guys. Today, every single pump got destroyed. Every single pump got destroyed. Started with JCS. The pumper made a shitload of money on that, made like 60 something thousand on that. And then everybody, everyone that chased that and did not sell, got roasted, got roasted. One guy made all the money, the rest of the lawns got destroyed. Same thing with CFM, what is it, CF, CFMS, and then NNVC, same exact thing. So, so we talked about the windows of opportunity, guys. So in trading, there's always windows of opportunity for the long, and windows of opportunity for the short. The windows of and then we call those things a front side and the back side. But those could be very confusing terms if you do not know what a back side or front side is. And a lot of people mistake it for back side and go all in and then they get squeezed and that's where zombies come in. So if you want to look at it, look at it from a different perspective. I just kind of made this up, right? It's called the windows of opportunity. So which window of opportunity, which time frame is best for long and short? So all these pumps were great for longs. If you were short and you shorted way early on any of these pumps that died today, you are smoked. You are stopping out at the very top it's because you're trading in the window of opportunity that's best for a long bias trader. Wait for that window to close. Once that window starts to narrow and close, then start to short. And then when that window closes for the long, the longs need to take action they need to take notice they need to go oh shit i'm up the window is closing i better get the fuck out before they trap me into the fucking next window opportunity which is for the shorts and once you're trapped in a short window opportunity you're fucked and the same thing happened to jcs look at jcs the window opportunity for that was very tight and nvc the window opportunity for long was was actually longer but it, you know it was, it was short-lived in the pre-market only but it was longer CFMS, the same exact CFFS, I think. CFFS, something like that. But anyway, we, I posted my charts on that. We did very well for the chat room. Um, and I'll tell you why I loaded up on NNVC. Uh, I'm going to share this. Did I share it with the room? You know, I like to always talk about painting the big picture. When, when all these things line up, that's when you can size up. So, Learning to size up is just not about leveling up. It's not just about sizing up, guys. Leveling up is just not about sizing. Leveling up is knowing when to put on size and when to take back size. So there are certain stocks that put more size on than other stocks. And that's because I'm looking for certain requirements that align with my thesis. So NNVC, I noticed what I did. Okay, take a look at my chart on Twitter, you'll see. You know, I, in the morning, I just took it easy, I waited. When the top was set, when the top was set, then it started to break down. The window opportunity now is no longer on the long buys. It's on the short now. So I'm just waiting now. I'm like, please, someone please pop up at NVC. Why did I like at NVC as a short? I like NVC as a short because of a couple of things. It's a known pump and dump stock that people have been using as a vehicle to pump and dump and manipulate. Looking up the filings, I noticed that they have an active shelf. They're selling paper. We posted this to the room, all this. So all this analysis is done for you by myself, Alex, and other members of the team, as well as other members within the community. There's a lot of great tra traders, probably better than me, man. A lot of great traders better than me, definitely better than me, better than Alex, better than everybody that we don't know about. They're just quiet in the room. They're sitting around, and they're taking advantage of the market, just like we are. Okay, and so the fact that all these are lining up and NVC went up huge, it tanked, broke, became what we call a broken stock, has dirty filings, way broken. And the only reason it started to move up because of what? The pumpers, the chat room guys couldn't find anything else of pump, they started pumping NVC. The moment that happened, I am licking my lip, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, I'm fucking hungry. I haven't eaten all day. <laughs> I'm going to fucking eat the shit out of this stock. There's going to be a ton of meat on the table. And then I'm, I'm here to eat the buffet. So you know it. I was not scared. 
But this is where the experience comes in. If you just heard what I just said, you would have all of the FOMO in the world and you will just get in very early. And then you will get blown out to the point where you hit your max loss and you have no choice but to stop out. The key to trading is just not, know, it's not simply knowing price action. It's not simply knowing fundamentals or filings. It's knowing when to actually use that knowledge, how much size to put on, at what time, what windows of opportunity. And so I waited for my real size when the VWAP area comes. Because once I know it's a volume coming up, usually they're trying to push this sucker to the VWAP. And they will go over the VWAP. You know why they go over? It's to trigger the short sellers who are putting in the hard stops at VWAP. We made videos on how to properly take a stop loss. If you got stopped out at the top or at the bottom all the time, it means you are part of the herd. I am using that knowledge as part of the herd, part of the sheep to make money, to take advantage. So I am saving my bullets for when the hard stops get triggered. And I'm licking my lips because you know why? We talk about this in the room all the time. I call it the exhaustion. So this is a term that I coined a long time ago called the exhaustion. It's, they, people still call it an exhaustion candle or whatever they want to use it, but the word is, so the, the, the reason I call it exhaustion is because you're like running. You're running uphill, okay? When you are fighting the trend, it's, it's going uphill. You're uphill battle. So NNVC was a broken stock. It was like a dollar under VWAP, right? Something like that, something ridiculous, a dollar under VWAP. And I'm just like, okay, I'm not gonna short anywhere near there because the people are not exhausted yet. You know, and then when the volume came in, they're running, they're running uphill because you know they're they're finding the trend. These guys are buying stock that is broken, going long against the fucking trend. And so what happens in the beginning is they're not exhausted yet. You get run over. Do not get FOMO. So this is where experience comes in. And so I waited, I waited for them to get exhausted. And then when it broke VWAP, what happens is it, it will trigger hard stops. Because the rule is, you know, if it's VWAP reclaims. You should get out. But people do not understand. It depends on where the stock comes from first. VWAP, all VWAP reclaims are not the same. Just like all um, high of day breaks are not the same. Just like all of low of day, you know, bounces are not the same. And nothing's the same. You have to look at the context, the overall picture of what the movement is. So I know this that it came from way low. It didn't come from near. This is why we have a concept with what we coined as hovering VWAP. If NNVC had hovered VWAP, fuck no, I would die. That hovering VWAP is the most dangerous setup for the short seller. Hovering VWAP is a very powerful setup for a long bias trader because there is no exhaustion set yet. The exhaustion comes when you're way underneath and you have to go all the way uphill. And when the exhaustion, and you're tired, it's like you're running a long time. You need to stop and take a rest. And the rest in trading is profit taking. There's a lot of back holders in NNVC. NNVC ran up the hill for $1 to reach VWAP. People are exhausted running that far. Back holders are trying to get the fuck out, breaking even, praying even. So there's a lot what we call an overhead supply. Too much supply on the overhead. I posted that picture in the chat room called the volume profile. I use that, you know, look that up. We teach that. Under eight bucks, all the volume was over. They crashed hard to seven bucks. But then now the, the pumper volume comes in. And that's where we take advantage. Okay? It was not hovering VWAP. It was hovering VWAP. I would not touch this shit. But the fact that it broke, it was really broken. I am licking my lips. Okay? So the money comes when you understand the context, not just the principles itself or the price action itself or the fundamentals. You have to put all of it to the big picture, okay? And that's how I was able to, to short it. As you notice, I didn't scalp out of it. I didn't scalp out of it at all. I held that shit for the fucking bottom because I knew where it started. I knew where it started. I knew where it started. I knew where it could possibly top out it would possibly top out on the VWAP reclaim uh, stops. So he took out all the stops of the VWAP reclaim. And then I'm like, 
that's when you, you, you fucking start adding your size. Okay? And it went up to what? 837, 847 or something. It did go up pretty far. Whoever shorted the low got destroyed and they're thinking $9 is coming. But I was still fucking adding, bro. To be honest, my average was 821. 821. I was nowhere near adding to my max. I was still fucking adding. And I was kind of pissed it didn't fucking fill me more. And so when it started to go down, I knew that it's game over because of a couple of things, okay? We talked about this. Alex talks about it a lot. It's the money flow. You track the money flow. Because what happens is money flows from one pump stock to another stock. And so the moment NNVC failed, the moment that the pumper got out of NNVC, he started to pump CFMS or something. What was that? CF, that CF stock, whatever it was. And the moment it happened, no one, no one was buying NNVC anymore. Everyone was dumping NNVC. And so I'm like, cool, man. Pump the other fucking shit up. And so I started to fucking track the other stock. Because I'm already in a, a big position on NNVC short. And then I'm just trying to figure out the hardest thing to figure out once you're in is to figure out where to take the stock off. Okay? Knowing when to take the stock off is very vital. Because you, you many times, oftentimes, you will turn a winner into a big ass fat loser if you're too greedy. Okay? So that's why we have a concept of scaling. People, people don't understand why I scale. I scale because you know what, man? I got to take some money off on the table. So I started to scale at seven fifty-eight, seven dollars fifty-eight cents. Why? <laughs> at half dollars. <laughs> and I know I wanted seven dollars. So I wanted seven dollars. Go back to the same place it went, okay? Because everyone starts to sell. But who the hell knows? So I started to take it off at seven dollars and fifty-eight cents, around the seven dollars fifty mark, and and took it all the way down to like the low sevens. So. That was a great trade. And in the meantime, I was tracking the other stock that the money flowed from NNVC to the other stock and I shorted the other stock too. You saw that on Twitter. So that's all I did. I moved from one stock to the next stop and I waited for it to exhaust itself. And exactly what happened. CHFS, whatever, it was like $2 point. But I didn't size that one. That was a little more scary. Uh, NNVC was a broken stock. The other stock was still making fresh highs. And so I took it a little easy because it was still like semi front side of the move. Okay, so notice that is what you are paying for when you're joining MIC guys. People are always talking about why the fuck should I join you guys? I can Google and find this shit for free. Yeah, go ahead, go Google what a VWAP is. Good luck trying to learn how to properly use VWAP to make money. This is where experience comes in. This is why you're joining MIC. You're joining MIC not to learn shit you can find on Google, it's to learn how to apply these. These items, these these indicators, these this information to make money. The application of it is more important than learning just what the fuck VWAP is. Because I can give you a tool. You don't know how to use a tool, you will blow yourself up. An example, if you did not never saw a gun before and I gave you a fucking gun, I guarantee you, you would kill yourself with that gun. Unless I taught you how to properly use that gun. You would shoot yourself in the fucking foot, in the head. You would, I guarantee you, you would fucking kill yourself if I gave you a gun. That's why you give a gun to the kid. The kid will fucking will kill himself. Same thing with a tool like VWAP. Same thing with a tool like knowing there's an active shelf out. Filings, things like that, guys. Whew. Okay, so that covers what I wanted to cover about. And that's pretty much, Jesus, man, you probably, we're going to post this up. Go watch this again. What I just told you. I guarantee you, 99% of the world do not know. Your fucking favorite food guru is probably listening to this thing that he doesn't know either. So I'm glad to help everybody. So which leads me to my second rant, and then I'll, 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 I'll save it for the special surprise, guys. I want to bring on a special guest, so stay at the end, because the special guest here, that this is possible, guys, and he's going to tell you how he's able to do all this, okay? But I wanted to rant really quickly, because today, I was, man, in the pre-market meeting, Alex was talking, and he kind of sensed that I... I was kind of losing it out of it. Like, it's not the money thing, guys. I've been making money. It's just, you saw, you saw me post my charge. You can tell when I make money. So, you know, I had a great week. I had a great last week, too. You know, very profitable both weeks. I was doing very well. But fuck, man. I was fucking, mentally, I was drained. I was pissed off. I'm, I'm just kind of like, you know, like, I do this to try to help people. And sometimes people are just fucking assholes. And, you know, it's, it's, 
This is how human nature works. You have a hundred people saying you're the best, you're great, thank you. And then you have one or two motherfuckers that says you're a scammer, you fucking idiot. But then you don't remember the hundred others that, that you've helped. But you remember always the two motherfuckers like that, that did a drive-by trolling. And so I'm like, fuck man. I'm like, why is this stuff even worth it? And a lot of times it's an ego thing too. Because I'm like, man, I'm, I'm not focused 100% on trading. I trade and then I stop trading to educate. And I told the guys, I can make so much more money if I just focus on my trading. But that does not make me happy. When at a certain point in your life where you can make money, you have money, more money is not going to make you fucking happy. You know, I'm not wearing Gucci. This shit is fucking from Costco, dude. This is like $12 shit from Costco. The most expensive shit I have on my head, actually, on my body, actually, is this fucking hat. Fucking hat was expensive. It's even more expensive because I fucking had lids put on my investing club on it. So this hat is like 50 something fucking dollars for a hat, which costs more than my entire outfit. Let me show you my outfit here. Fucking shit. This shit was like 20 bucks. This shoe is expensive, it was like $38. This is the old school Roche Nikes. <laughs> So there you have it. The most expensive shit on my fucking body is my fucking hat because I monogrammed my investment club on it. So money don't money don't make you happy, guys. Having no money sucks. I guarantee you that. This is why I'm here helping you to make fucking money. So these guys are out there. They just started making money recently. I've been doing this for a long time, guys. You know, nowadays a hundred dollars is not buy you much. <laughs> Inflation, all that. Back then, a true million is a true million, right? So, so those guys, I always say, oh, Bao, you suck, you don't make money. Yeah, I'll, you know, 90% of the time, I don't care. The 10% of the time, it gets to me where it's kind of like, why am I fucking doing this? Why am I sacrificing my fucking time to help people? And I'm fucking, what? I mean, you know, sometimes I don't want to wake up to do this shit. Sometimes I don't answer PMs. You know, I don't answer people's fucking replies. But then I always come back to it. I guarantee you. I always come back to the end of the night. And I feel bad. I feel bad there are people out there just learn, wanting to get to where I am. And I am here crying how bad my life is. How depressed I am. And I'm blessed as fuck. So sometimes we need to kick ourselves in the ass. And so this next special guest made me fucking so unbelievably happy and so hyped up today. I have just fucking like almost teared up, man. I posted on IG... His name is Steph. I hope he's around, guys. This is fucking good because I'm telling you, man. Without him, I might I might just fucking leave MIC. I'm, I'm not saying I'm leaving, but I didn't want to fucking do this shit. I mean, I just get tired. I'm like, fuck, man. I can make so much more money trading. If people just want money, fuck this shit. I'm not going to help anybody. I'm just going to make the most money and then people can say, I can say, fuck you to everybody. But people are joining other services because of big P&Ls, things like that. So sometimes it gets really depressing as a person that really wants to help people and as a person that that understands this game better than everybody else. I pretty much taught most of the fucking gurus out there, right? And and they, a lot of them have just turned very evil into a pure pump about self-ego, about just making money to enrich themselves. And they don't educate. And so what happens is this, guys. What happens is today, a day like today happens, where JCS, CFMS, NVC, all the sheep got slaughtered from that room. But he posted a giant ass PL. He posted a big ass PL that's going to attract the next next set of sheep. And so people are fucking losing the livelihoods. To do what? To fucking enrich these motherfuckers. That fucking cannot trade but pretend to be a fucking teacher. But all they do is they pump and they dump. They don't. They can't even fucking stick around their chat room. The moment they lose, that I'm out of here. I'm like, what the fuck? Where's your responsibility to you guys? You see me ever fucking leaving? I'm there because you pay us to learn. And so I fucking. You think I want to be there? You think I need the money to be there? Fuck this shit. You think I I, I want to give up leaving shorting and NVC? to do this walk but I do it and so after a while it just gets really pissed off as I'm a human being I don't need this shit I can, I can make tons of more money if I focus on trading just for myself imagine if I never taught anybody my strategies 
I would be killing it. You guys wouldn't even know where to enter and exit. Why do you think I top tick and I bottom tick all the time? For years, for decades, people were wondering how. And that they would not believe how simple it is. I'm just laughing these guys. These guys are using Fibonacci. They're using all sorts of crazy ass shit to do a simple thing that I drew a line. And then when I show people that, they're like, whoa, what the fuck? You stupid fuck. You, you're, you're charging people to draw this line? But they don't understand. Just like VWAP. You have to learn how to use it. Knowing it doesn't mean shit. It's the experience of how to use it. Okay? But you know what, man? And so Steph kind of saved you guys, to be honest. He fucking, all this stuff that he wrote to me today, I'm like, man, it, it got me, it reminded me of why I did this, guys. And so Alex said to me perfectly today, Bao, your life is not in your hands anymore. <laughs> your, your mission is to help others. It's because you will leave a lasting impact and a legacy behind that will make you happy. Money won't make me happy. But money will make me happier than fucking unappreciative motherfuckers out there, right? And that's where the two trolls come in, things like that. But I should not forget that. I should forget them and focus on the people that I really want to help. But, you know, we're human beings, man. I'm a normal human being. Fuck this shit. I don't need this shit. You see what I'm trying to tell you? It's, it's, it's like I have an ego, too. You don't think I want to fucking wear nice clothes? You know, but I'm, I'm, I am keeping myself in check on purpose because I have a bigger mission. Because you imagine if I fucking go around buying fancy shit? And then I preach to the world to save. How would that make everybody look? So I'm trying to practice what I preach. Same thing with the way I trade. Alex leaves at the zombie hour because he's preaching, preaching to you that. He's not sticking around. He's not doing stupid shit like revenge trading. All these motherfuckers are revenge trading. You will blow the fuck up if you don't know what you're doing. The, their members are blowing up from revenge trading. But they're, they're getting away with it because they're good traders and they have a lot of money. You ever see us fucking revenge trade? We say it like it is. We practice what we preach. Okay? He stops at zombie hour. Alex stops at zombie hour and he fucking leaves. You know what I'm saying? I take my losses just like any other motherfucker. The only thing I want to fucking revenge trade and get out of it. But I'm like, fuck this shit. I set my max daily loss and I walked the fuck away. You don't think I can fucking afford to lose more than 10 grand? <laughs> right? <laughs> Things like that. You, and and the, the small account stuff is like, fuck, man. Trading a small account is a little more difficult than trading a giant-ass account. And so we are putting ourselves in the position of our members. Okay? And so that's why sometimes you see me with two accounts. Kind of like I have one small account and one big-ass account. <laughs> but I'm still trying to take it easy, right? And I have another account I can pull out in case. But I don't want to get there, right? So, but if I focus solely on my trading, dude, I would be killing it more than I'm doing now. But the money is irrelevant to it. After a while, people think that you, that life is all about the money. But when you re, you need money, yes. But when you have enough, when you find that money does not make you happy, other things do. So I'll give you an example. Finding love. Some people find it very easy to have a family. There are a lot of people out there with a lot of money. But they cannot have kids because of whatever reason they have. Right? They would give up all their money to have a family and have kids. Things like that. But a lot of people have too many kids and don't value that. But they're chasing money. So, you know, it's different for everybody. I want everybody to be... You know, be happy. The goal every day is to be happy and to change. For me, right now, in my life, in my opinion, I've been done that. I've done everything. I made the giant PLs. I fucking came from the ghetto. I did, did all this. So my next step is to leave a le legacy. And I'm going to bring on Steph, and he's going to tell everybody what's going on. Because I this, you know, this is a guy that pr probably must save MIC right now, guys. Because I was like, fuck this shit. <laughs> I'm not, but now I'm back. I'm going to be inspired. I'm inspired. Motivate me. You fucking keep doing this shit. I'm trying to bring him on and see how he did. Raise your hand, Steph. Let me try to bring you on. There we go. Whoa, little buddy. Wait, yeah, bring on the. Uh, hey, I brought on uh, B Wells by accident. <laughs> Who did I bring on? Hey, brother. I was supposed to bring on uh, Steph. B Wells killing it too, man. How you doing, brother? Oh, shoot, I can't hear any, um, no one can hear anything. Oops, let me, let me get out of this. Um, can you get out? Oops, I brought on the wrong, I, I don't know if this thing is working. Remember last time it was broken. I can't hear anything. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me?
Can you hear me? Can, 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 okay. Okay, where's Stefan? I hit the wrong button, guys. I apologize. That was B. Wells. That's my man, too. He's killing it at MIC. So happy for him. It's totally self sufficient. There's too many lighting here. Hey, where are you, buddy? Steph, where are you, Steph? I'll try to bring on Steph and uh, Braun B. Wells by mistake. I'm sorry, bro. Sorry, buddy. Um, I can't see anything on the screen. That's the problem. Hey, where's Stefano? Where you at, buddy? Uh, I was trying to bring on Steph. I hit the short, the pop by mistake. <laughs> where is he, man? He's a little shy, so I'm going to force him to come on. Jeez, what is this? I'm so sorry, guys. So, there we go. Steph, a hoop. Oh, did, did, I, I look like bum. <laughs> did you go and uh, comb your hair? Is that why you didn't show up? <laughs> man, How everyone doing, was man? freaking talking about my hair, man. I don't give a whatever. Hey, yeah. You know what, man? <laughs> At least you have hair. <laughs> exactly. I'm, have hair. I'm thankful. I mean, I have the stuff here and there, but, you know, it's not bad. <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, hey, man, Mom, a lot of guys you, out there that, that wish they have that hair. <laughs> I wish I had any hair. <laughs> I'm glad I still have a little hair. Enough, so. Exactly. Hey, so do exactly. this, man. Exactly. Do you... I want to give you mad props, bro. What you, you, you know, man, people don't, people don't say it enough. People don't tell other people how they appreciate them, right? So I told you I appreciate you. You know, that's the type of person I am. So I appreciate you, the fact that you, you know, you, you actually told me what you told me because that, that, yeah. that helped me a lot, man. Um, yeah. So introduce yourself and tell me, tell everybody what, what why we are here talking. <laughs> I don't even know, man. I'm so scared, you know, like, <laughs> it's already 300 people, you know, I'm kind of scared, you know, but it's all good. So, yeah, I'm really thankful, actually, that I find you and... Uh, What's your name? Start yeah. off with all that, your background, your all name right, yeah. and all that. Yeah, I'm Stefan. I'm Stefan. I'm from Serbia. I'm an immigrant here. I live here like seven years or something. And I don't know if you want to hear my bad story, but, you know, I don't like to talk about that, you know, but... Talk about it. Just talk about briefly. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I came here with really low money, like less than thousand bucks. You know, didn't even speak English at all. So that's that a was war like, over there, right? Your your country, yeah, is a yeah. war-torn country, just like mine. Yep. It Serbia, was, yeah, yeah, it was war. Yeah, it was war. Now it's much better. But uh, uh, also when I left, it wasn't that bad, you know. But now it's much better, you know, actually. So, but yeah, that was a war when I was a kid. There was a war and all of that, you know. So I was literally seeing the bombs flying. You know, I was like riding my bicycle and. You know, I get lucky, like maybe 30 minutes uh, before that happened, the ones hit a Chinese embassy or something, I don't know what happened. And everything was shaking, you know, and I was like a small kid. I don't know, I had like maybe 10, 12, 15 years old, no matter, you know. So that shit, that shit is done. Everything is, you know, most of my family is good, my friends, no one get hurt. But, you know, so after that, the, the situation in my country was really bad. You know, economy sucks, polit politics and all of that was so bad, you know. Everyone was fighting to live a decent life you know so and uh well you know what happened after you know i was like you know what i grew up a little bit and i was like i want to learn a new language i want to go somewhere else you know and i tried the united states i really like it i find a way to stay here and i work many different kind of jobs you know i was washing the the cars you know like doing construction what I liked the most and what I made the most of money was a truck business, you know, like driving semi trucks, you know. <laughs> oh, I thought, so, I thought you said drug business. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. <laughs> no, I do Talk smoke every day, but you know, not that kind of drugs. <laughs> so, okay. I did a trucking, you know, I've been making a lot, like good money, like 10K, 10K a month or something. That was for me like, like, wow, that's a lot of money, you know, but I was always behind the wheels, you know, driving. And I was like, man, I want to make pretty much you know, this, uh, similar amount, but I want to do something at home, you know, and that's how I find stocks. That's how I study for two, three years with the guys that, you know, I kind of messed up everything, you know, with the stocks, you know, other, other motherfuckers, you know, losing like three years, you know, and just about to give up. And I saw you, I saw your Asian guy, you know, like talking about some stuff here and there. And I was like, that was free stuff on YouTube, one of your first videos. And I was like, Okay, that makes sense, you know, because I was three years already watching a lot of videos, you know, like I actually met the Sykes. I'm going to talk. I don't give a shit. I met him and then he said, oh, you are so greedy. I see in your eyes and you're so greedy here and there. I was like, dude, I'm greedy. I want to learn. I want knowledge, you know, like show me what to do, where to buy, where to sell and why, you know. And then 
I was just about to give up. I didn't lose much. I play only for like 50 bucks, 100 bucks up and down, you know, like, you know, because I didn't know what I'm doing. I don't want to lose more, you know, like hard earned money driving fucking truck all the time, you know, and losing it like that in a day. So, um, yeah. And then I saw you, one of the first videos, you pretty much show everything for free, man. Like support, resistant, just, just place a order and wait, you know. And I was like, yeah, man, let me try it, you know. And then... I tried it, I get a couple of good trades and my balance back then, it was really low, you know, with, uh, with money, you know. So I went trucking again. I was studying like crazy when I was driving, you know. I actually texted Alex a couple of times the pictures, you know, of me driving <laughs> in that trade, you know. <laughs> so when I, I had a lot of time and I was studying a lot, you know. And um, yeah, when I come back, then I started, you know, a small, uh, increasing the size, making like, you know, 300 bucks, 500 bucks, 1,000 bucks, 5,000, 10K. And now, you know, I'm like, I'm good, but, but, you know, I'm making like $300, pay to... $300 a day is a lot of money, though, man. You know? you I, it is, it is. But listen, I'm making that, like, you know that we're making that in a minute or two minutes, man. Come on. Man. It's so, so stupid. So tell us how you how you got to, so you told us how you got 50 bucks to 300 bucks. Now, how did you get 300 So So today, I posted you made 3000 and you replied you made, on the average, $2,000 a day now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can, yep. So yeah, so I know you're very. I'm gonna make. I make. I, I'm trying. To, I'm trying to make like. Okay, so I can show the uh, JCS right now what I did. I mean, if you want. I mean, I don't know. Like, do it. Do it. Educate us, bro. He, you are now the junior. <laughs> he's on. now the junior moderator. So. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if you can see it here, but for example, you said it in a in a chat room that this is the J JCS. That was a pump from the you know for the farmer. That was a pump. And then when the stocks went down, I was like, okay, I'm going to short top up and then I'm going to risk it to go up about the, the 14 or whatever the line is. I'm going to cut it for like 100, 200 bucks loss. And the shit went down all the way down. I made like 400 bucks here or whatever. I don't know. And then again, pop, I made short again. I then cover, cover, cover. And then here, okay, that was a little bit chasing all the way down. But I cut it really low. And then again, short, cover, Short pop, cover down, short pop, cover down, short pop, cover down. And then I was like, I made almost like 2K there. And I was like, I'm good. So, you know? so that's I awesome. You, know you, did? You, you, you traded. You didn't just hold it for yeah. a home run. No, yeah. You know? And, and actually, like, I had a, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. And then you look back, also, you're like, holy shit, I'm up 2,000 bucks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I didn't even look. I didn't even look the fucking PL, you know? I was like, okay, I know that I'm making money, but I, I got it on the side, you know? And I was okay. Yeah, nice. it's too fast. Days. Focus on it. Focus on the yeah. Yep. Focus on the lines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. I'm really thankful that I find you. To be honest, you know, and to know that you're so humble, and you know, like like you said, like I said, you put an elevator down for all of us. All of the videos and everything is there. We just have to study. Go with a small size. Try with hundred shares. You don't have to push more. You know, hundred shares, and then when you find consistency, you will see by yourself that you can slow up, uh, slow and. Uh, Size up, you know, so. Hey, hey, you were the person that, I gave you the hotel room in the San Jose meetup. I forgot. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. The, the, actually, Luca, that was Luca, that was Luca. And I was like, man, and I called Luca, like, hey, Luca, you know, like, can I, can I, can I go with you? And he's like, let me ask him out. <laughs> and then he asked you and he's like, okay, why not? You know. So I'm and telling you, I, I believe, I believe in fate, Seth. Everything yeah. happened for a reason. So I didn't even know who he was back then. I just know that he joined a long time ago. Yeah. And he's a good guy. And so one of the yeah. guys. Like his name is Luca, uh, he 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 was coming from what Canada? Yeah, he is. He? Yeah, he's from, from Croatia actually, but he lives oh. in Canada. So yeah, because he no told matter, me that he's yeah. your. So he told me he was your friend. I knew you, and so I was like, yeah. okay. And I know, like you know, he flew down. It's a lot of money for most people to fly to America and to fly yeah. to California, and and the uh, hotels are very expensive. So I actually hooked up Luca and, and you with a hotel. I didn't even know who you guys were back then. <laughs> yeah, you're right, man. Like, and I was like, I can't fucking believe, you know, this guy like hook us up for like what, like, and the rooms was like 300 bucks. I was checking, you know, and I had a fucking mirror inside the the. I had a TV inside the mirror, you know. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> I, I I made sure I got you guys a big suite. And this was yeah, at the thanks, Fair, man. Guys, this was at the Fairmont Hotel. In San Jose, yeah. it was a five star. It was pretty expensive, <laughs> you know. So yeah. I didn't know who these guys are, but I believe in fate. I believe that if you believe in someone and you give them that hope, that they will change their life. And so look at where Steph is today. Holy shit! You know, what I'm much better, man. That, much better. Thank you a lot. Thanks for everything what you do, and I really appreciate it and all of that. You know, like 
No words. Yeah, now, like, but but hey, you're gonna you, don't worry, man. You you're gonna go. Damn it! Now I gotta help other people. So <laughs> now I gotta trap. That's what I'm saying. I'm, that's that's I what I said. You, I don't like attention, man. I have a lot of friends actually. There's a lot of people here coming coming behind me, and I'm teaching them every day almost. Like some of my friends, they're coming, you know, and they're gonna start these days of like five of them or something, and they're gonna that's start why, small and hey, see. You, you know what, man? I tell all my guys. I tell Alex. I tell my friends. I tell everybody. You know what, man? It's I'm looking for the, the guys with the biggest heart, the guys that are humble. You grew up the same way that I did. I was for, from Vietnam, and we escaped the war, man. Yeah. You know, the Vietnam War, just like yours. So I totally understand. <laughs> yeah. We came here with nothing. And we look back, and we forget sometimes, like, how bad yeah. it was when we were kids. Yeah. And so, so but yeah. we have such great hearts that you are now helping your friends. I didn't even know you were helping your friends like this. But I, I, I knew yeah. that you were a good guy. That's all, you, you know? Let, let me tell you, I even train much better when I have someone behind me, you know, because I get have a formal. I'm just like, okay, this is the line where we have to look. And then I train much better, you know, like, and when I don't have no one here, I'm always, like, trying to make more, you know, like, getting earlier than I should, you know. So That's that's why, that's, that's but, why I tap. You, you figured out the secret. Those, those are your taps. Yeah. Those, right? That's your yeah. training accountability. Yeah. Buddy's looking behind yeah. you. And sometimes this is yeah. why MIC is good for me because I want to sit. I want to trade too. I'm up a lot of money today. You know what I'm saying? But but if I stick around, I'm going to break the rules. I'm going to give people the wrong idea, and I'm going to be a bad teacher. <laughs> so I, you know, I'm here. Yeah. I am. I was like, I don't, I don't want to leave. I see. I, I see you sometimes. <laughs> I see you sometimes you get stuck in a trade, you know, and then you're like, shit, you know, I should cut it or something. Yeah, you, yeah, but, you, you know, yeah. I'm stuck. I'm, I'm stuck a lot. I'm a human being. And yeah. when I get stuck, I, 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 I'm mad, not because I lose the money. I'm yeah. mad because I broke the rule that I've been teaching people not to break. Yeah. So, so you, you became successful without even knowing that the guys that back of you have helped you because they're, you, they're the tab. You don't want to break a rule. <laughs> it looks yeah. stupid. I know. So, Thanks, so Bob. now Steph, so now Steph is now a junior mod. I'm like, I did, I never really knew that you were doing like this, man. Until like, you know, I, I knew you're doing good. I, I, all I see you is you're a very humble guy. You, you, you go on your skateboard every day. I, like, <laughs> <laughs> I do motorcycle as well, man. I, I like to ride. <laughs> yeah, but I see the motorcycle. I see that. I yeah, see the yeah. tennis. You know, so I'm so yeah. fucking happy, man. I'm so happy yeah. now, and and I. I and and you said exactly right, man. Send the elevator back down. That that's you, your heart is right there, man. Your heart's so big. I appreciate everything, you know. You've fucking done for just just being on Thanks, here. You bro. motivate me, man. I mean, everybody needs the motivation, and I hey, hope we everybody need you. out there. We need you. Don't don't disappear, please. We all need you. Like, <laughs> hey, hey don't I'm, go gonna help, I'm gonna I'm gonna help everybody, and then you take over, man. That's my goal. My goal is to help everybody. Then I don't have to go. I don't have to show up anymore. <laughs> I would love to be ten percent of you. I'll be like the happiest person there. You know. <laughs> no, man, you're already there, bro. You, the, we, we are alive, man. Sometimes in my life, I don't know how I'm alive. I came here literally. I escaped from the war on a boat, man. I was literally yeah. on a fucking little ass raft, going to Thailand from Vietnam. I, I'm too young to remember this. But I was a baby, but I'm like, dude, you know, I'm I'm just surprised yeah. at all these things. How we are here, like you said, with the bomb. You had the bombs overhead. I'm crazy man. <laughs> I was I was young, you know, as I didn't know what's going on. I had fun, you know, but still when you like put time back, you know, I was like, what the fuck? You yep. know, like, fucking crazy. So what is your <sighs> what is your goal now? What 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 are you um I'm gonna I'm gonna leave off with some positive takeaways for everybody. So give someone and like like a quick advice, like what what are you doing that has improved? Man, training? my goal every day is to just don't short freaking front side, you know, when the when the when the shit go below Above, Viva, don't touch it. Wait for a back and then hit it with a bounce. You know, go bounce, go short, go size. It's so simple. Three, five minutes, man, you're making money, you know, like. But if it's you so wait, hard. Yep. If, as it's long as you so wait for the top, to wait. right? Wait for yeah. the top. <laughs> yeah. Wait for the freaking dumb shorts like me, you know, to get squeezed. And then when the top is set, you just, when they're like, oh, my God, I lost so much, you know, like. And then you just, you cover everything. The shorts are covering. There is no one else to get stuck, you know. The lungs, they're not buying all the way 200% up. Yep. Boom. And so going straight down. The, re the reason why we're, we did, we, we could do, that we know this now, because we, we were the stupid people. We were the stupid guy that lose like that. <laughs> I know. But it's all right, you know. Like, that's, I guess that, that's how it should be, you know. Like, to yes. figure out that, you know, it's, 
it's normal thing, you know, you're going to lose. I'm going to lose every day. I know that I'm going to lose, but I'm going to lose small. I'm going to be like, okay, now it's above you up. I'm going to use much smaller size. I will do three ads, four ads, five ads, but if it's a smaller size, I'm going to lose whatever. I'm comfortable. 100 bucks, 500 bucks, whatever. But when it goes awesome. back, I'll, I'll hit it. I'll go there. <laughs> I'll be there. Hey, man, keep it up. So I, I, told, I told Steph, now he knows what he's doing. The biggest hurdle is risk management because you do not want to get overconfident because you had a yeah. winning streak and then you think you're, you're the best and then you start breaking the rules. The moment you stop breaking the rules, it's game over. So keep up I what know. you're doing, brother. Let me bring up, uh, well. let me bring up B-Wells now. Cause I, uh... So thanks, right. man. Thanks, I'm going to have well. Alex yeah. hit you up because now you are you're now a junior mod, man. I appreciate you everything right. that you've thanks, done. Man. Thank, Thank you, man. You. Thanks, MRC. Thanks for everyone. All right. Thank peace. you, man. Uh, all right. All right, hey B Wells, my my buddy. I don't know how to get out. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> to I have no idea. I don't know how to get you out either. <laughs> yeah, I'll I'll just get out here like that. I'll leave. Yeah. Right, thank you. Oh, dude, that was so awesome, man. Dude, those stories. Okay, I think we have like five or ten minutes before it's over. So if we get cut off, I'll see you guys next time. I'm gonna bring B Wells on now. Oh my guy. <laughs> What's up, baby? What's up, I was actually on the phone with my tab, man. When you called, we was kind of talking. I was listening to the live. He called and I was like, oh man, I'm watching this live right now. Let me let me get back at you. But you uh, doing, man? yeah, I'm doing good, man. I love so, you guys. Dude, man. is that story sick from Steph? I mean, that's dude, that's so crazy. What? Man. Hell yeah, man. Dude, that, that could Started... be your next movie, man. Fucking fucking bombs being dropped overboard to now fucking killing it. Yeah, Yo, we crazy. gotta make the big short too. <laughs> and it's just so tell everybody who you are and give dope, us some man. updates on your anything you want, man. Because the pandemic yeah, has hit us all hard, man. So I mean, the film Has industry. All... I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, I've been, I've been very blessed to be able to do voiceover jobs and stuff in the process. So like, I got two spoken word campaigns coming out over summer. I did one for Sharpie. I did another one for Dell Computers. They're gonna pay me. I wish they sent me an XPX instead. I, I take that. <laughs> but uh, but I'll, I'll take it. <clears throat> um, then I'm working on a movie this summer in New York. So, all right, so tell me who you are, your name and all that, so they can look you up. <laughs> I'm gonna plug you. Yeah, in Yeah, man. Um, I'm I'm Brandon Wellington, aka B Wells, aka Short the Pot, aka Chocolate <laughs> Drop. You <can> feel <laughs> me? No. <laughs> um, right, nah, what's your rapper man, name, bro? Just, what's your rapper enjoying... name? Little 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 B Wells nah, or something. Big B. <laughs> nah, ain't no little in it. It's just B Wells. <laughs> well. Big B, Big B. Okay. All right. So I remember. I remember it's your good, Sharpie man. campaign. I think you told me about that a while back. That, that's gotta. Yeah, they just was, was, was that the Super Bowl? Came back from the bank. Was, was that like, was the Super Bowl? No, that was last year. I did. I did a oh. Buffalo Wild Wings Super Bowl commercial oh, okay. last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, nah, man. Listen, update since we last talked. I don't remember when we last talked. Was it summer? Man, it was right before the pandemic. It might have. Yeah, it might have been, man. MIC changes lives, bro. Like, uh, y'all, if y'all follow me on Short to Pop, everything I do, I learn from MIC. Everything I talk about, I learn from MIC. I've been chatting every day. They create self, self-sufficient self traders, but I still stay because I don't know everything. I'm not the FM man. I tell people that all the time. I'm not the man. You go to my tagline, they tell you, you want to learn how to trade, you check out MIC, man. I changed my life. Um, I'm going on what? This is my longest win streak of my career. And I'm talking like months. I'm here seven months straight green. Whoa. I've had days. Yeah, knock like on I've wood. Had... <laughs> hey, I don't want to. I don't want to go back. Nah, man. Um, so how'd you do that? Let's talk about that. That's that's incredible, bro. That's incredible. What have you done differently that got you to that streak? Holy crap! Yo, I don't know what happened, bro. I... All right, I don't know, man. Maybe it was a breakup this summer, but I was like, I gotta get it, <laughs> I gotta get it. <laughs> so like, so I came back to small caps because I was kind of, uh, I was actually writing algorithmic trading for big caps and with me and my tab, and that shit works too, by the way. That's a whole nother thing. But then I came back to just short small caps by hand, and um, I just started following the process a whole lot better, man. I tuned out all of the noise and I just started start following the process, and so like. Now what I do, it's kind of the same thing um, Steph was talking about, bro. I use lighter size when it's above VWAP. 
or when I'm trading pre-market and when I get what I know that I want, I start banging it out backside more size. And I've gotten better this year. I've gotten even better at adding more size uh, to winners, adding to winners, adding on confirmations, saving some of my bullets and things like that. You guys are probably much more um, confident cowboys when it comes to hitting that line. I like to see it reject off that line a little bit. So you're going to always have a better average than me. <laughs> but we also take more risk and we lose. <laughs> Hey, you know what it is? I, um, I didn't have no seven month in a row every day agree like that. That's sick, man. Um, nah, I just keep it simple, bro. And like I tell everybody, I don't, I never really even talk PLs. I always share charts with everybody and things like that. But uh, hold on real quick. But yeah, you know, it, it's MIC. I'll talk about it. I've got my average up to about $600, $700 a day. And that's cool. You know what I mean? Obviously, I'll make more in, in entertainment. So, like, I haven't made numbers that make me go, like, oh, shit. You know what I'm saying? But, like, it's been cool because when you think about it, bro, that's to – I'm happy that I'm on track this year to put up six figures yeah, outside of entertainment. That's that, the that's thing people don't understand. You learn first. The moment you become comfortable, you can always size up whenever you're comfortable. Those numbers – Bro, when I started doing – when I <laughs> – when I came back to small caps last, this summer, this the this the only one time only I'll talk PL to everybody. When I came back to small caps this summer, I kid you not, I was using like 100 share max, bro. And I was having a tough time getting over $100 every day, $200. And so, like, my, I was somewhere between like 80, 150 every single day. But I was trying to build confidence in the process, confidence in the process, confidence. And I, would, I didn't care. Like, it was like I needed the cash now. What I really wanted to do was like, really built the confidence and once the confidence came the sizing came the consistency came and now it's like i'm doing the same thing i was doing when i came back six seven months ago it's just this time you know it might be two thousand shares three thousand shares that's exactly and right man i keep telling people this exact you, shit, bro think. you you you've hit it on the head on how to become a successful trader you first have to learn with smaller size to learn to get yeah. confident to learn what you're doing because too many people they start with bigger size and they lose all their money and then they give up trading so, you know, like no. you, you, I noticed you're taking it more seriously now. You started uh, your own MIC, uh, not, I mean, your own trading uh, account, which is awesome. So now you're, nah, you're I've putting been more. Using, I've been using Instagram as tabs. And I'll tell you what, since I have, since I've been doing that, my trading has gotten infinitely better. That's because every saying. day I'm getting seriously. up. I'm, what? Yep. You so like I'm going, through, <laughs> I'm, going, I'm going through the process every single day. I'm looking up. I'm making sure I'm going through the violence. I'm making sure that uh, – what the information that I put out is safe information. And I was telling somebody this in uh, MIC chat like a few months ago. And I was like, every day I get up and I try to put together a watch list. And then I go look at Alex's watch list. I go look at uh, Tom's watch list. And I see how much am I thinking like the people who taught me or who's teaching me. And I start to realize, oh, my God, okay, I'm starting to actually pick the right things. And big part of trading is avoiding, avoiding the wrong stuff and making sure you're in the right one. That's already – putting the edge in your favors um and so i would just start training my mind on that and what i love about mic and people don't talk about this enough is bro they really do build self-sufficient traders i kid you not i don't i, don't, I would never have to log back into mic and i already know everything to do and if you haven't joined you probably should but i'd love i stay there every day because i still don't know everything there's some days where i don't understand the play there's some days i don't understand a file and there's some days i don't understand things and they're right there to be like, hey, this is what I see. Here's what I'm thinking. And I, I always, me I as always well tell too. myself, I mean, none of us need it after a while. But the problem is, yeah. as, a, as a person, you cannot just trade on your own. You need to be nah, in that and then environment. The market cycles. You need to be yeah, in, in the that, market that environment where everyone's focused on the same thing. So who's your tab? You shout out to your tabs. Who's your tab? Um, Marv is one of my tabs. Uh, Marv is an MIC lifetime member as well. JP, uh, he's not in MIC no more, but he's one of my tabs as well too. Instagram is one of my tabs as well. I bet I got oh, I got so many tabs, bro. It's crazy. So I, I'm I'm always talking ideas with people. Um, uh, I talked to Jake Addison too. He recently joined MIC. I would say he's one of my tabs. We kind of go over plays and things like that. And yeah, it's like. Why go at it alone when you, when you can't? You know, no, it, exactly what that person said. No one person knows everything. And so in the MIC room, there's always other people out there to be on the lookout for things you don't know. And so for me, yeah, man, I, I'm happy. You know, hey, I look, I'm, I look so, at where I'm so I'm glad at. that you do. Yeah, because you yeah. know what, man? I'm telling you, man, your, your, your 100 dollars days has now is the blueprint for the bigger days coming. Yeah, you like know. now, now I've been hitting 700, 800 consistently. And then you start hitting that mark. I had days where I made two, three grand. And I'm like, okay, but that didn't happen. That didn't happen until I started hitting six, seven, and eight consistently. And over you and over only, and over people ask me, 
People ask me all the time, when should I size up? You are the only one that knows. You'll know. You'll, you'll know. know. You'll know. When you you'll know. Because eventually, <laughs> yep. eventually you'll start doing it so many times. And like I last year, I ended last year with an 89% daily win rate. I checked up all my green days versus my red days. And 89% of the time, I was picking the right shit. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I should trust in those numbers. And it wasn't just like 100 trades, bro. We're sometimes, talking like sample size. You're, you're like me, man. Sometimes we get too comfortable. You know, doing the same thing. And so we need someone like a tab to, to tell us, like, hey, man, why don't you just put 100 more shares out? So if you just start putting 100 more shares out, mm-hmm. you go outside your comfort zone, but that still won't hurt you much. There's only 100 more shares, right? And then you keep doing that. I keep looking up because I'm in it. I took another pop on NNVC up to 775. I covered 723, and I got, like, a piece left. I want to see if it breaks 725 and wash out the 7. What is that uh, right now? <laughs> Should I run back? Trade, that? Nah, it's trading at 732. It just kind of broke back. It, it had another major rejection over VWAP. Um, oh, and shit. then tanked back down. Yeah, it, hit, it popped up to 780. And then I jumped in. Um, now yeah, it's about to watch. Oh, yeah, dude. now it's about to watch 7, Actually, I'm 775. I'm walking back now. Tell it to come back up. <laughs> oh, <I'll watch> <laughs> this, is, this is why Steph was talking. Oh, I, shit. I waited for it to pop up. I ended up shorting up here. I Dude, that's exactly what I told you. Talk about how to do it. The VWAP so, rejection. Oh, about, I was one of those dumb shorts that I started in here, eight, got in, then I covered that VWAP. I was half size. It got banged out. I waited for it to reject this line, added in, added in, covered Holy the shit. drop down here. Hey, I walked away. I went to get lunch. I came back, shorted, covered, shorted, covered. Now I got a piece left waiting for it to break this line, and I look bro, to cover bro, up. Bro, that, that, that looks like a professional chart, bro. <laughs> My charts Where'd, you charts. Where'd you learn all that? That's fucking phenomenal. That's a great chart. Uh, learn, I learned that from MIC. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so, uh, yeah then we're going to probably get a break at 725. And if it does, hopefully we get a washout of seven and I'll probably take it back down here. 680. That's awesome, but for the bro. most part, but for the most part, we scale, bro. Like the same, you know, people, you scale in the trades. I scale out of trades too, but I talked about scaling. Like I'm not full size throughout these trades. If I get it, the line that I can, that's eat, not going to say predict because, you know, but but you know what I'm saying. When you get the move that you want, hey, yourself, go two thirds. Yep. Go don't be greedy. Take off, take, don't be greedy. Take off, take off a third. That adds up over time. You see what I'm saying? And it's like, take it. Why not? And then I'll always save a piece for a runner because you never know. Sometimes these things just go. So I might save a quarter or I might save a third yep. and see if I can squeeze another dollar out of that thing or whatever the case with like a risk-free stop. Um, Sarge. Because you're already, cause you're already that. cushioned. That, because yeah. you took it off, you're already cushioned. That's how you're able to hold this. Yeah, Sarge talks about that. You know Sarge in uh, MIC's lifetime as well too. You know, Sarge was saying that what he does is kind of the same thing. When he hits the line that he wants, whatever case, he'll cover two-thirds, three-fourths, or whatever case, he put in a risk-free stop so that it can never go back against him and then see if he gets the rest out of that move. And I always, I've been trading in thirds since I was doing like 4X back in 2011 and 12. I've always kind of traded That's a great strategy. I, I might do that too. Um, that's, that's great. Yeah, because cause you know you'd be like, fuck, I covered too soon. I know, so that's me, always, man. That's me all the time. <laughs> exactly. So I always keep like a little quarter or whatever the case added on. And then uh, just in case I catch that runner. And then if not, it'll just come back and take me out and break even plus one, if, you know, so that's it. Um that's great. I That's traded. What else I traded today? I traded Sins, I think. Let me see. S E N S. We we, a, we, um, we we may um lose connection because an hour's up. So if we lose. I'll see you guys tomorrow. That. But yeah. Yeah, S E N S. I had a technical difficulty on this. I was trying to, you know, when you try to put in an order free market, but you forget that you can't put them in right, so it tr- triggers when the market opens. Oh shit. So I, yeah, hold on real quick. Yes, see in my living room. So, yeah, I shorted SENS 180 or whatever the case. We had that top at four. This was a low hanger play, guys. It wasn't normal. I tried, oh, wow. a range, I tried to put in a range order pre market that got triggered market open. So I jumped back in, covered the rest, took it back down to like the yeah, 350 area. That's a nice, and then I that's walked nice away short. zombie hours. That's yeah, nice. it was a quick, it wasn't nothing crazy. It was a quick pop and drop. I missed out uh, CHFS. Uh, I didn't take that one. And I also didn't take JC. Was it JCS? Yep. Those are a little more. Uh, more, more scary. <laughs> so that's why. Uh, yeah, I'll peek that. Yeah, I didn't take JCS. Nah, but I feel I good today. I hit my averages and I kept it simple. Um, no risk, low stress. Now I'll fucking go to lunch. <laughs> yeah, and people, y'all underestimate the power. Y'all. Like like I said, I felt good when I was making $100 a day, $200 a day. You got to do long-term math. You know what I'm saying? Like the average person in America makes $31,000 a year. So if you're, if you're making $100 a day, you are already around like $24,000, $25,000 a year. And that puts you just below average. You make 200, you're right above average. So I always try to keep stuff in perspective. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, cool. You make 1,000 a day, that's fucking phenomenal. You're looking at, you know, 20,000 a month. 
that's way above average or whatever the case. So I say don't forsake small numbers. Start small. Build the confidence. And then from there, you know, let it size up and then see where you go. And it ain't just about this year. It's about the years to come. And so – and this is why I stick around, like I said, with MIC, bro. It's the difference between having a good game and having a good career. I've had a couple good games, you know what I'm saying? I've been hot for a year. There's been a couple basketball players that be hot for a year, but can you be LeBron James? Can you be good for 20 years? 30 years. That's a whole nother thing. And so you're looking at Bob, man, that's somebody that's doing this way longer than me. I had a couple of good games. This man had a good career. And I'm not, I'm not the effing man. I'm still a rookie in this game. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, man. Hey, appreciate you coming on. I'm you already know, I'm man. I love you, Bob. Love you, man. I love I'll you a long you. time. I'll catch you soon, bro. <laughs> I'll see you in the room, Fred. You know. All right. Thanks, brother. All right, guys. We're going to end this before it dies. I'm going to give a fuck this shit. I would, I'll do this, guys. Uh, Steph, encourage me. I'm, we hardly ever do this. Text Tosh. Tosh, give me a number. Text the word bomb. <laughs> bombs away. Just like Steph, you know, the bombs away. I'm going to give whoever is not in MIC, new to MIC, half off the fucking first month. $99 for the first fucking month of MIC, guys. We hardly ever do this, but $99, it will get you in the first month, okay? We're, that's saving half off. So whoever, whoever is still stuck around to here, text Tosh, bombs away. And you're going to get it for $99 the first month to join MIC. Okay, guys? 99 bucks to join MIC. This is, this is your chance to get in. And we, we, know, we hardly ever do this, but I'm going to do this because uh, you guys stuck around. <laughs> All right, guys. Tosh, text them your number, man. Or hit up any one of us. We'll give you 99 bucks the first month, guys. Anybody who's not MIC, this is your chance to get in. Uh, I'm going to stick around until Tosh texts the number one more time. You can always hit me up. You always hit me up, hit Alex, hit up whoever. Okay, guys, this is so inspirational. This is the chance to join, man. Are you still around, Tosh? Um, I don't have your number. I'm, I'm very bad with numbers. So uh, hit up Tosh, guys. Let me see. 213-458-5997. 213-458-5997. I will see you guys later.